Hey everybody, it's Joe at the Makerspace. And if you've come to the Makerspace and learned to use the 3D printers that we've got here, the next question that I always get from people is, well, how do I create 3D models? And my answer is always the same, Tinkercad. Not that Tinkercad is necessarily the best 3D modeling software, but it's one of the easiest ones to use. It, in fact, it's so easy that I am not going to make a Tinkercad for beginners video. I think that that's just ridiculous. All you have to do is go to Tinkercad.com, set up an account, go through a couple of tutorials, and you will learn how to navigate the view. You will learn how to bring in objects, turn them into holes, group them together to make complex objects. And from there, it's just a matter of playing with Tinkercad. So I'm not going to teach you any of that. Tinkercad teaches you that. I'm going to teach you some of the advanced tricks in Tinkercad that can take your Tinkercad game to the next level. Now, Tinkercad is always coming out with new tools. That It's good to know them, and I like some of the new tools that have come out recently. Uh, I might recommend them to you. But I want to I wanna go back a little bit, and let's talk about some of the oldies but goodies that could help you out a little bit more. So let's jump in to Tinkercad. Here we go. So Tinkercad up and running here. And uh, it's got the interface you know. Over here on the side, we got the objects that we can drag in and you can navigate the view and all those things. But did you know that every time you bring in an object, it's got these you know, uh, uh, parameters for them? For instance, with a cube, you can turn up the radius. And the radius says how round the corners are, and the steps go to that radius. Fewer steps, let's do one step, and you see how chunky these corners are, but we do more steps, and they get rounder and rounder and rounder. And after about eight or 10, there really isn't much point to keep going other than increasing geometry, because it's a thing you want to do. I stop it, I stop at eight most of the time. Uh, but you can also set the height and width and length of it. And what's interesting is if you, for instance, I'm going to set this one. Okay, I'm, I'm going to show you two different cubes. This one is 4 by 4 by 10. And its radius is, is uh, well, that's got to be less than 2. So let's make its radius 1. Okay, that's what this one looks like. I'm going to bring in another cube. I'm going to set its radius to 1, okay? But I'm going to set its height, width, and depth using, using these tools. So it's going to be 4 by, oh, my snap grid is on too high. Do you guys know about the snap grid? Get to know the snap grid. That's uh, not so much an advanced tool, but if you didn't know, if you're having a hard time controlling how big or small things are, the snap grid will allow you to do that by 10. In fact, I kind of want to show you what it looks like here, but yeah, by 10. Okay, these are both the same height. They're both the same width. They're both the same depth. But look at how the corners have been affected on this one. In fact, just to drive home the point, I'm going to make this 2 by 2, and I'm going to increase the radius to, in this case, I could increase the radius to 5. But take a look at what it does to it. The radius is kind of like stretched out. That's because we stretched it out by resizing the box as opposed to changing the parameters of the box. So this is a 10 or 20 by 20 by 20 box stretched into the size. This is a 4 by 4 by 10 box. So I'm going to delete that one. I think that that's an interesting thing to know. It's a little bit complex of an idea if you can wrap your head around. But here's an easy idea that will change your world. I'm going to change its radius to 0.5 though. I want it to be mostly a square which is slightly round corners. And uh, I'm going to bring a cylinder in here. And I'm going to shrink this cylinder down to be 2.5 by 2.5. Oh, that snap grid! I need to turn it on 0.5. You actually don't though. You can just type in the numbers. 2.5. Hit tab. 2.5. Did you know that when you see those numbers, you can click on them and type them in? So I'll click on the height. Uh, I'll make the height 5. And then I will move it in here. That's too big. Instead, I'm going to make my bead just a little bit bigger. I'm going to make this a 5 by 5 by 5 bead. 
easy enough to change. So, next tip, you can type in the numbers and change things when you're resizing them. And you can also do this during movement. You can do this all over the place. Tinkercad, anytime it shows you a number, is pretty much inviting you to type in that number and change it. Now, I'm going to jump to the work plane. I want to teach you a little bit about the work plane. So let's say that on these beads I want to have uh, um, letters. So I'm going to come over here to the text number. These are going to be letter beads and I'm going to grab the letter G. But I got to shrink down the letter G. And I got to make it be about, oh I'm going for three on the sides. And then, oops, I did that too far. Now I gotta rotate it up. So I gotta rotate it by 90 degrees. And did you know the rotation tool? I grabbed the wrong rotation tool. Undo. Did you know the rotation tool? If you keep it inside the circle, it snaps to like 45 and 90 degrees. But if you move it outside, you get finer control. And I want it on the inside for 90 right now, but that's how you do that. And then I gotta position it against there. And then I gotta move it up. And I'm not really sure if it's positioned inside properly. Uh, I'm going to make this into a hole, and I want it to be about 0.2 down, but it's hard to tell like this, so never mind. I'll just grab it and group it, and I'll grab that. Well, I'm, I'm not going to grab the hole and group it. Group it in, and it's not quite right. There's an easier way to do it. Let me show you that easier way on this side. So I'm going to grab the work plane object. Have you seen this work plane object before? Have you tried playing with it? When you grab it and pull it out here, you can put it against your object. And it will move the floor to be that surface. So I put it there. Now I grab the letter G, bring it in. Now because the work plane is standing up, uh, it's really easy to move this object around and get it positioned where I want it. I am going to turn my snap grid to 0.5 here so I can position things nicely. It's even easy, in fact, I'm going to turn my snap grid to 0.1 so that I can drop it below that surface two millimeters. There we go, turn it into a hole. And now I'm sure of where I put it because I controlled where the work plane was and wasn't that so much easier. I love the work plane object. I think that it's great. And all you have to do is click the work plane object and click anywhere else and it just drops it out there. Now, I will point out that if you have a lot of small geometry close to each other, like on the surface of a, of a curve, or like the curved corners here, this work plane could be put at some weird angles. And it will happily work with the work plane at weird angles. It will move this around at weird diagonals. It's okay doing it. So, be careful with that. I generally only recommend the work plane for large, wide areas, but knowing that you can do that, maybe somebody will come up with a clever use for that and surprise me. Now this hole in the middle has been bugging me this whole time because it's not perfectly centered. There's a trick for doing that. And that's the align tool. So if you click on the object and then select all the objects that you want to line up with each other in certain ways and then click on this align tool. These little dots say, okay, I'm going to align everything to the middle, to the top, to the middle surface here. So there we go, align to the middle, align to the middle. Now that hole is perfectly aligned in the center of this object because I used the align tool to get it right. And the reason why I clicked on the cube first and then selected all of them is because that puts the alignment so that it lines up with the first object that I selected. That way I have a little bit more control over it. So that's how you do that. I'm gonna group it now because I'm happy with that. Okay, so I'm not going to worry about putting the faces on the other one. But I do want to show you one last trick before we go, and it is the duplicate tool. So, if I grab this object, and, uh, oops, I didn't mean to resize it. I wanted to move it. I'm going to turn my snap grid back to one so I can control the movement a little bit easier. Okay. And I duplicate this object. The duplicate, so I did that with control D, but you can also do it with that button right there. Uh, the duplicated object is right on top of it, so you have to move it before you can see it. See, now we got a duplicate. But here's the thing. If you hit duplicate again, 
it repeats the transformation that you did to the first object so you can make a whole line of these so if i were actually making alphabet beads i might have put the center in and then duplicated them and got them all lined up and then put the letters on them but obviously i'm just showing an example here but the duplicate object let me show you show you something else we can do with the duplicate object i'm going to grab this last duplicate that we did i'm going to duplicate it oops did i no i didn't okay good um I'm going to duplicate it, but then I'm going to move it a little bit. I'm going to rotate it a little bit. I'm going to shrink it down just a little bit. And remember, if you hold down the shift key while you're resizing things, it resizes all of the uh, dimensions proportionally. Now I'm going to duplicate it again. And notice that the new one is moved, shrunk, and rotated. Duplicate again, duplicate again, duplicate again, and again, and again, and again, and again. And we got a nice little curve here if I had done a bigger rotation we might have ended up with a conch shell this is really fun it's it's really good and it shows some of the functionality you can take and duplicate things around a sphere and as long as you get it right it'll pop up 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 line it up around the sphere and stuff like that so the duplicate object is really cool now one last mini tip uh, do you know about have you played with all of these things here and have you learned have you found the shape generators under all I love the shape generators. There are so many great tools in here and you can lose a lot of time playing with them. And I recommend you do. I recommend you go in here, see what tools they have. These were created by people. And if you ever find one that you really like, that you think you're gonna be able to use, like this circular array, I love this tool. It allows me to come in here and create an array of objects. In fact, I can even say I want to do a custom profile and make a shape that I want that looks however I want it to. I can make more copies of it. And uh, I can even say I just want half of them. Now it looks like teeth. <laughs> I didn't realize I was making teeth, but that's okay. We're going to go with teeth. Um, I can even make them a little bit bigger and stuff. It's super cool. And I like this tool so much that I just click on the little star next to it. And now it's in my favorite, so all I have to do is go feature or no. Uh, favorites and there's the circular array and the other tools that I found that I really like so there we go there's a couple of really great tools for you well I hope that this has helped you I hope that uh, this video will enable you to make cooler things that you will then come into the makerspace and 3d print and show me and when you show us here at the makerspace I hope that you'll take a second at our computer and show it off on Instagram for here for the makerspace so that the world can see what you've done. And if this video has helped you, please share it with others. Say, hey, I learned a little something in this video and it was really great. Uh, just, you know, to encourage me to make these videos more often. It's proven really difficult to have classes here in the makerspace, so maybe I'll do a series of these videos. And if you like them, be sure to subscribe, ring that bell. I'll let you know when more of them are coming out. And otherwise, Happy making. Hope you have a good time playing with Tinkercad, and I hope to see you here at the Makerspace.